Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I'll be testing and reviewing the Ambernic RG351V and comparing this with some of the other handhelds such as the Retroflag GPI case, Game Boy Advance, PSP, and more. So I just received my RG351V from ploylab.com and I'm super excited to test this out. This is available in three different colors, white, wood green, and transparent black, which is the model I have. This very much resembles the original Game Boy, but it's capable of playing much more than just Game Boy games. This one came preloaded with MULX software and a ton of games on a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. It supports multiple emulators for consoles and arcade, such as Sega Genesis, Sega 32X, PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, and much more. This features a 3.5 inch IPS display with 640 by 480 resolution, and it looks great. For the CPU, it's using the RK3326 quad-core chip with speeds up to 1.5 GHz. It also has 1 GB of RAM and a 3900 mAh rechargeable battery. For storage, it has two microSD cards, a 16 GB card for the firmware and a 128 GB card for just the games. And this also features built-in Wi-Fi. This handheld is capable of playing pretty much all 8-bit and 16-bit games with full-speed emulation, but it can also play some 32-bit games such as Sega 32X and PlayStation at full-speed or very close to full-speed emulation. And it can even play a handful of Nintendo 64 games with some decent emulation. Now let's play a PlayStation game. This is Marvel Super Heroes playing at full speed, and if you take a look at the frames per second counter in the right corner, you'll see it never drops below 60 frames per second. So this game sounds plays and looks great on the RG351V. This handheld did come with a few other items in the box, such as a screen protector, a manual and a startup guide, and a USB-C charging cable. The quality of the Ambernic handhelds seems to be a step above most of the other Chinese handheld consoles on the market. They're not perfect, but I do find them to be impressive. The RG351V is the follow-up to the RG351P, which has very similar specs. But the biggest difference with this model is it's in a vertical format that looks very similar to the original DMG Game Boy. Located on this side right here is the access for the two micro SD cards. This one is for the firmware, and this one is for all the games. And I really like this feature because I can upgrade the firmware without touching the games. Also located on this side you'll find the power and reset buttons. And located on the back you'll find four shoulder or trigger buttons. All the buttons feel nice and responsive and seem to work as intended. But when using the shoulder buttons it does feel a little awkward at first. But I got used to it. And the same thing goes for the 3D analog thumbstick. It works good but it did take me some time to get used to it. And located on the left side will be the volume control. And on the bottom you'll find two USB-C OTG ports along with a headphone jack. And located on the front of this handheld is a function button that comes in real handy. If you hold this button by pressing up or down this will adjust the volume. And if you press down on the center of the analog thumbstick then push the function button. This will bring up the RetroArch menu where you can save the game, load games, and play with various different other features that have to do with the RetroArch program. For all the emulators that run through the RetroArch program, there are several shortcut keys available that can be activated while holding this function button. 
For example, R1 plus the function button will save a game, and L1 plus the function button will load the game. L2 plus the function button will activate fast forward, and R2 plus the function button will display the frames per second counter. Now let's compare the RG351V with some other handhelds. Here it is next to the original Game Boy. The size and shape between the two is very similar when viewing these from the front, but from a side view, they look completely different. The RG351V is capable of playing original Game Boy games with pretty much flawless emulation on a much nicer screen. I grew up with and loved the original Game Boy, but the RG351V is a far superior handheld as far as performance goes. The only advantages I would give to the Game Boy is the buttons and D-pad seem to be slightly better quality, and being able to play the actual Game Boy cartridges is something I find to be very special. Here it is next to the previously released RG351P. The overall specs between the two are very close and I would say the emulation performance is the same, but the RG351V does have a nicer screen with higher resolution, a bigger battery, two memory card slots, and Wi-Fi capabilities. And because of these differences, the RG351V is my favorite between the two. And here it is next to the Retroflag GPI case, which is powered by a Raspberry Pi Zero. They both have similar button layouts, but the RG351V does feature a 3D thumbstick and two extra shoulder buttons. It also has a larger screen with higher resolution and a faster CPU running at 1.5 GHz versus the Pi Zero CPU running at 1 GHz. Here is a comparison of Gex, a Nintendo 64 game running on both handhelds using the Parallel 64 emulator. If you take a look at the frames per second counters on each screen, you'll see a drastic difference in speed. The RG351V is running at very close to full speed at 59 frames per second, and the GPI case is running at around 20 frames per second, which is way too low to be considered playable, as you can see right here. The game needs to be running at around 55 to 60 frames per second to be considered playable. So with this comparison, I'm just trying to show the difference in emulation power between the two. And as you can see here, the RG351V is performing much better with this Nintendo 64 game. But to be fair, there is a CM3 Plus mod that can be used with the Retroflag GPI case to make the emulation performance much more comparable to the RG351V but I will not be covering this mod in this video. So even though Gex is playing good on the RG351V, the Nintendo 64 emulation on this handheld is not so good. So out of all the Nintendo 64 games I tested, I would say the majority are not playable, with some of the games dropping all the way down to 35 frames per second. But there is a small handful of games that did perform okay, such as Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, and Turok, just to name a few. And here's another Nintendo 64 game, this is Clave Fighter. And at first it started out with a high frames per second during the menus, but once the game started, it didn't do so well. Here's another comparison with the Retroflag GPI case, playing a Sega 32X game, Chaotix, with the Genesis Plus GX emulator. The frames per second on the RG351V never drops below 60 frames per second, so it's running at a constant full speed. And on the GPI case, it's running at around 41 frames per second, making it unplayable. So as you can see here, it's running great on the 351V. And here's what it sounds like when it's running on the GPI case. And here is another Sega 32X game, this is Primal Rage, and it's running great at full speed.
Now let's compare the 351V with the Game Boy Advance SP. So for the most part, Game Boy Advance emulation on the RG 351V is very good, but there is a few games that push the limits of the Game Boy Advance hardware, such as Doom 2. Doom and Doom 2 are both amazing ports for the Game Boy Advance and play surprisingly well when compared to a lot of other ports released for other consoles over the years. The emulation with games such as Doom 2 on the RG 351V is still decent, but the frame rate will drop at times down to 54 frames per second, which becomes noticeable, but still playable in my opinion. And here is another Game Boy Advance game, Batman Vengeance, which is running at very close to full speed emulation on the RG 351V. If you watch that frames per second counter on the RG, you'll see that it never drops below 59 frames per second. So to sum it up, Game Boy Advance emulation on the RG 351V is good, but it still doesn't beat the Game Boy Advance at its own game yet. And here is a comparison with the original PSP. This is Rainbow Six Vegas. And I am using a standalone emulator called PPSSPP, which sounds funny when I say it out loud. So PlayStation emulation on the 351V is awesome, but PSP emulation is not so great yet. Although the video cutscenes play surprisingly well. But once the game starts, it becomes apparent there is some issues, and this game ends up crashing after a few seconds. So that game didn't work out. Let's try out another game. This is Assassin's Creed's Bloodlines. And this game is playable, but the frame rate does drop quite a bit. Here's an example of how it should play on the original PSP. And this is what it looks like on the RG 351V. So as you can see here, it's doing okay until I get to this fight scene. Here's how it should perform. So PSP emulation is really not a good option on the RG 351V. You will have a much better experience playing your PSP games on a PSP. Go figure. Now let's move on to some Super Nintendo emulation using the SNES 9X emulator. And we'll play some Wolfenstein 3D. This game is playing great with the frame rate never dropping below 60 frames per second. And the emulation is pretty much the same for all Super Nintendo games, except the Super FX games such as Doom. And here is Doom. And as you can see here, the emulation is struggling with this Super FX game. But the good news is, there's only a handful of Super FX games on the Super Nintendo, so it's not such a big deal. Unless Doom and Star Fox are your favorite games. And honestly, this handheld should be plenty powerful enough to play all Super Nintendo games, including the Super FX games. So this just might be a problem with the emulator itself. If I was to test some other emulators, I might get some better performance. Now let's test some arcade games. This is X-Men 
using the MAME 2003 Plus emulator. The frames per second is averaging at least 60, so it's playing at full speed. And I'm having fun playing one of my favorite childhood games. So as far as arcade emulation performance goes, it will vary. There is so many different types of arcade games, with some being more CPU demanding than others. NBA Jam, the arcade game, is an example of a game that requires more emulation power, because the frames per second is dropping all the way to the 40s. Here is another arcade game, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, using the Final Burn Alpha 2012 emulator. The performance for this game is doing well, running at full speed, and it looks and sounds great. Now let's try some Dreamcast, with Sonic Adventure 2 using the Flycast emulator. So unfortunately, Dreamcast emulation is really not practical yet on the RG351V. I tested quite a few games, and the performance was pretty similar between all of them. Parts of the games were somewhat playable, but the very low frames per second makes the games unenjoyable to play. But maybe, in the future, we might get a standalone emulator that's optimized precisely for the RG351V, and we may be able to actually enjoy some Dreamcast games. Nintendo emulation with the Nestopia emulator seems to be flawless. Out of all the Nintendo games I tested, they all ran at full speed, with no issues at all. And I will now leave you with one more game. This is Mortal Kombat 4 for the PlayStation. It's running at full speed using the PCSX rearmed emulator. The RG351V is an awesome handheld. It's not the perfect emulation machine, but it does a very good job overall. If you like this video, if you could, hit that like button. And have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.